Hi guys, this is Miss Wesley here, and we're ready for Unit 5, Skill 1. We're going to talk about the properties of similar triangles. So our essential question for today is, what properties do similar figures have? So please note here that we are now talking about similar figures um, versus congruent figures, and we're going to specify the difference down below. So take a minute to jot that down, your essential question, and then we're going to go into some um, characteristics of similar figures. All right, so if we first talk about what the word similar means, first off, you want to notice that there's a different symbol. All right, so notice it's just one squiggly line compared to our congruent symbol with the equal sign under it. So figures are similar when their corresponding angles are still congruent. All right, however, their corresponding sides are in proportion. P O R O R T I O N. And we're going to talk about what that means down below. But essentially, when their corresponding sides are in proportion, it means they're not equal. All right, so you might want to put that in parentheses not equal. We use something known as a scale factor. Okay? And the scale factor is the ratio, that should be an A, R A T I O, of the lengths of two corresponding sides. Okay, of those similar figures. So you might be asking yourself, well, Miss Wesley, what, what, what are similar figures? We've only seen congruent figures before. So we're going to get similar figures when we see a dilation. So dilations create similar figures. So let's take a look at an actual example here. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. So we have these two triangles here, okay? And notice that it says ABC is dilated, creating our new triangle DEF. So we'd first want to make sure that we're looking at the shapes in the right um, order. So what I mean by that is how this goes A, B, C, this goes D, E, F. So they're already aligned, right? So now all that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at some of the sides. So let's say I'm going to start here with 10. So this 10 somehow turns into 20. So I'm going to ask myself, hmm, well, what happened there? Well, that side got multiplied by 2. So let me check another one. So let me take this 7. The 7 turned into 14. Well, that also got multiplied by 2. And let me get another color here. The 6 turned into 12, and that also got multiplied by 2. So that would mean that 2 is the scale factor. Everything got multiplied by 2 in terms of the sides. Notice that the angles are still congruent because remember we said angles never change, but all these sides got multiplied by 2, therefore 2 is our wonderful scale factor. So now we're going to take a look at well, what's if we kind of sum up here what the differences are. So let's scroll down. So congruent versus similar. So the first thing that we know to be true, which we just talked about, is that we still have congruent corresponding, i to abbreviate here, angles. So that is true for both congruence and similarity. Angles never ever change, okay? But what we know to be true about congruent shapes is that they're ha they have, excuse me, they have congruent corresponding sides, okay? While similar triangles have proportional, proportional, my letters aren't finishing here, proportional corresponding sides. So again, their sides aren't equal, but they're in proportion. So just to kind of point in here when we're going to see each. So congruence we know would happen with, oop, that's not what I wanted to do, hold on. Congruence would happen with, get the right setup, there we go, with a translation. It would happen with a reflection. Or it would also happen with the rotation. 
whereas similar shapes we're only going to get with a wonderful dilation. So now that we know the similarities versus differences here, we're going to start taking a look at what are some actual um, questions that the regents might ask us related to similar figures. So go ahead and turn your packet to the next page. Okay, so here we are with example number one, and it says which of the following is false based on the fact that ABC is similar, remember that's your similar symbol, to DEC. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to make my triangles match because if you notice the letters like we talked about before, A, B, C, it has to line up with D, ooh, let's try that again, with D, E, C. So my bottom triangle, this one right here, that one's kind of already laid out like a triangle, so I'm going to flip this triangle so it looks the same. So I want it to go A, B, C, then D, E, C. So I'm just going to take my pencil here, and I'm going to go ahead and draw the small one, which I want it to go A, B, C. I'm going to draw the larger one. I'm going to make that go D, E, C. All right, and you're going to get used to redrawing pictures all throughout Unit 5. So even if you're like, I can see it without it, just do it, please, because um, it's going to make a world of difference later on. So now I have to go over and make sure I copy my side lengths over right. So A, B was this side here, so that's going to be an 8. Let's see, B, C was 5, and A, C is 6. Okay, so I got that one taken care of. Let's see, E, C is 8, so that's over here this time. And X was C, D, that would go down here. E, D was 12.8. All right. So yes, I turned these triangles a little bit, um, but again, the whole point was to make sure that they went in the same order. A, B, C, A, B, C, D, E, C, D, E, C. So that's going to help me to figure out some stuff here. So now I'm just going to simply go through and you'll be like, well, I'm supposed to say there's no numbers over here. And the Regents has done that before, so it's all about matching the sides and the pieces up. So if we look at AC, AC to DC, we first want to know, do those pieces match? Well, AC is my first and last, DC is my first and last. So I'm going to put a little check mark here next to that top part. Why does it keep doing that? Because that, in fact, does work. Check. All right, now I'll check the bottom part. A, B to D, E. A, B's first two letters, D, E's first two letters. So that also works. So I'm going to give that a check mark. So it's not choice one. So let's go to choice two. So choice two is now talking about A, B, and B, C. So A, B, and now notice the difference here. It goes first two, second two. Okay, so it's slightly different, but this can still work. So A, B to B, C. First two, second two. D, E to E, C, first two, second two. Well, that matches. So first two, second two, first two, second two. I'm following the same pattern. So that's another one that can get some check marks. So it's not choice two, because again, we're looking for a false answer. All right, let's look at the third one. A, C to E, C. A, C, first and last, uh-oh, E, C. So right away, I see a little problem. Let's check the bottom part. D, C, and B, C. D, C, and B, C. Yeah, these are not going in the same order, guys. So hopefully you caught on and are thinking the same thing I'm thinking, that 3 is going to be our answer. But let's just check and make sure 4 is also true. So 4 set as angle A, match to angle D, A, and D. Those sure do, in fact, go together. So this one here, again, just checking is the only way to go about that problem. We're now going to take a look at the same problem, but actually finding X, so we know how to do it algebraically. So I'm down here in example two. This time it says in the diagram below, ABC is rotated 180 degrees around C and dilated to map onto DEC. So I'm just going to make sure I have my triangles all laid out. Determine the value of X and explain your response. So you have to make sure you see the second part of that that says explain, because if you don't, you're not going to get full credit. So just like I did before, I'm going to first stack my triangles, A, B, C, and then D, E, C. So this is the same exact picture from up above. So I'm going to take a second and redraw the triangles. So my small one, I want it to go A, B, C. I'm going to make my big one and make it go D, E, C. 
So again, all I was doing here, A, B, C, D, E, C, A, B, C, D, E, C. Okay, next step is to start going over and adding in some numbers, just like I did before. So A, B was 8, I find that makes 8, B, C is 5, and A, C was 6. Okay, I'm going to go to my next triangle, let's see, C, D is where the X was, C, D is down here. C, E was 8, and E, D was 12.8. So at this point, I have my two triangles labeled, and I have three sides up here. I only have two sides down here, but remember our goal is to actually find X. So I'm going to set a proportion up, and I'm going to make it be my small triangle over my big triangle. All right, and I already have them laid out like that. Here's my smaller triangle. Here's my bigger triangle, which I can again see from the picture. So if my goal is I know I have to find this X down here, I'm definitely going to have to use the 6 because those pieces go together. But since I have the other pieces as well, it doesn't matter if I pick the 8 and the 12.8 or the 5 and the 8. Just because I like numbers without decimals, I'm going to go ahead and pick the 5 and the 8. So if I want to finish this proportion, do small over big, I have 5 over 8, because those pieces match, equals 6 over x. All right. So now from here, I'm going to focus on just this. Sorry for my stuff that's overlapping. And we know that at this point, we can simply cross multiply. So 5 times x gives me 5x. 6 times 8 gives me 48. Divide both sides by 5. And we get x equals, let's see, 9.6. Okay? So if you go back up to the question, you're like, Miss Wesley just turned the page already. Not quite, because it said determine the value of x and explain your response. So I know x is 9, but then I have to say why, or because, um, or sorry, the word explain always means you have to write a because statement. So x is 9.6 because, like we said before, similar triangles, so I did that backwards, I said it right, x equals 9.6 because similar triangles have proportional sides. You might be able to hear that music in the background. Proportional sides. Right. And that's my explanation. Okay. So again, they're proportional because we had to set up this proportion right here. And then we cross multiplied to get our x value. Okay. Hopefully that one made sense. If not, please stop the video now and call Miss Griffin, Miss uh, Davis, or myself over. But I'm going to take a look at example three on the next page so we keep going with this algebra stuff. All right, here we are, last page, almost done. So we already talked about how the corresponding sides are in proportion, but that also allows us to say that the corresponding perimeters are also, and I'm going to write it down here because there's no way I'm going to fit it up there, proportion. So meaning that, think of that first example I did on the very front page, how all the side lengths in that first triangle doubled. Well, that would then also mean that the perimeter is also going to double because the sides affect the perimeter. So number three here is an actual regions question, and I want to make sure that you understand how to do it. It says in the diagram below, JKL is the image of MON, after a reflection and a dilation. So seeing that word dilation right there means we're going to have similar triangles. It says where KL is 28, so I'm going to go ahead and write that in. KL is 28. LJ is 20. MN is 8. And the perimeter of JKL is 79. So remember, perimeter means the distance all the way around the triangle is 79. So since there's not like an easy way, like I'd have to draw a circle and say 79, what I like to do is put a P in the middle for perimeter and say that's equal to 79. So the question says determine the perimeter of MON. So I'm going to put a P equals X because that's what I'm looking for. Okay. So first thing I'm also going to do here is off to the side, I'm going to go ahead and stack my letters. J, K, L, M, O, N. So my triangles, I'm just going to do a little redrawing here. So I want it to go J, K, L, my other triangle, 
M O N. So if I use some colors, again, make sure you're looking at them right. J, K, there was nothing on. All right, right here, J, K, there was nothing on. But on L, K was 28, so I'm going to write that in. J, L was 20. And then my number in the middle was 79. If I do the same with the triangle on the right, I only knew M, N, this side right here. So that's down here, so that's going to get my 8, and then X was in the middle. So now, based on my pictures, I can quickly tell that, well, the 79 is going to go with the X, and likewise, let me get my pen back, the 20 is going to go with the 8. So if I set my proportion up, I'm going to have 79 over X, because again, those were the numbers in the middle that matched, and then I have from the bottom pieces, 20 over 8. And this time, if you're wondering what I did, I did big triangle over small triangle, and then big triangle over small triangle. So if you wanted to write that in, you could. I did big triangle over small triangle. If you did small over big, small over big, that also works too, but I just tend to work left to right, so that's the order that I picked there. All right, this point I'm going to cross multiply, so 20 times x is just 20x. 79 times 8, you definitely need your calculator, is 632. Divide both sides by 20, divide both sides by 20, we get x equals 31.6. So therefore, a different color here, we go back and check to make sure we answer the question right. Determine the perimeter of MON. Well, that does mean that, in fact, that this perimeter right here, going all the way around this shape, would be 31.6. You also just want to check the um, validity of your answer. So, I mean, like, does it actually make sense? Well, this perimeter was 79, so this perimeter should be smaller, because this is definitely our smaller triangle. 31.6 is smaller than 79, so it works. Okay? One last example here, um, and then you'll be good to go to start working on some practice. Let's scroll down. All right, this one says on your own. So given the diagram below with A, B, notice that this is saying it is parallel to ED. Determine the length of BC. So all I'm going to do for you is I'm going to put a little X there. That's the piece you're trying to find. I want you to pause the video, try this one on your own, um, and then after a few minutes, press play. My work will pop up so you can check it. Um, and then if you get it right, go on and move to the practice. If not, please be sure to call your teacher over and we'll go over it with you. So pause the video right now. Pause it, pause it, pause it. And then when you're ready, press play and you'll see my work. Okay, so I really hope you pause that there because otherwise you're just going to see all my work and then it won't be good. So first thing I did here to just kind of talk you through my process is I stacked my letters here. Now, you'll notice I had to go A, B, C, and then this one flipped, and I had to go E, D, C. Um, for the fact that it said these lines were parallel, so if you actually went in and marked your angles up, what you would have noticed is that A is alternate interior with E. So that's why these two had to go together first. So please be careful of that. Um, if you see the word parallel, they're going to be flipped as well like that. So once I figured out the order of my triangles, I then went over here and I redrew them, A, B, C, E, D, C. I copied all my side lengths and made sure I had them labeled correctly. From there, I knew I had to find X. So I said, well, the 6 is going to match with the 7.2, hence my first. Um, fraction here, and then I did the x with the 10.8 second fraction, cross multiplied that, and long story short, we end up with the wonderful x equals 9. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could also go back now and you could find ec, putting an x down here, but I'm going to leave that up to you if you would like to or not. We have the answer right over here for you, um, so if you did, you could just check it there, but at this point, Please look this over, keep these out, take your practice packet out. Definitely you need to do some practice problems and then um, take the quiz from there when you are ready. All right, see you next time.